you ever wished that you could multiply yourself so that you could create more content, grow your brand faster, this episode is for you. Welcome back to the Brand Gravity Show. I'm your host, psychology-driven brand strategist, Kay Putnam. And my guest today, Jordan Wilson, is the host of the Everyday AI podcast, newsletter, fantastic platform. And we have a really interesting conversation about how to maximize AI as a brand builder, as an entrepreneur. And I think you're really going to enjoy and get a lot out of this episode. Jordan Wilson is the founder and CEO of Accelerant Agency, a boutique digital strategy company based in Chicago that scales startups and small businesses. After bootstrapping Accelerant to six figures of ARR in the first year, Accelerant has helped grow dozens of companies by reverse engineering their digital strategy and focusing on metrics that matter. Before starting Accelerant, Jordan served as the executive director of Triple Threat Mentoring, a youth mentoring nonprofit that impacted 5,000 at-risk youth every year. During his nearly 10 years with Triple Threat, Jordan mainly focused on partnership events and activations with Nike and Jordan Brand. Before Landing at Triple Threat, Jordan worked for six years as a multimedia journalist, most recently at the Chicago Sun-Times, and collected honors such as the Pulitzer Fellowship and ACP Story of the Year. Jordan holds a master's degree from the University of Illinois and a bachelor's degree from Southern Illinois University. Let's get straight to the conversation. Thank you so much for being here, Jordan. This question probably isn't for the bulk of the audience that's going to be listening, but I have already gotten a bunch of pushback regarding AI. Some of the things that I've heard is A, it's unethical, B, it's going to take over the world and end everything as we know it. Where do you stand when it comes to AI in business and leveraging it? Great question. I think a lot of people view AI as a threat. Is it a threat? In some ways, yes, it is. But it is also, I think, whether you are a marketer, an entrepreneur, or just a business owner who's not doing you know, building, it is our greatest tool. I believe it should be viewed as an asset. It should, in, in essence, a lot of AI, at least generative AI, which I think most of the audience will be familiar with here, you know, text, text generation, photo generation, video generation. I think those things are essentially extensions of the internet or extensions of, of media that already exist. So it's almost like if you have a project, if you're building a business, would you use the internet? Yes or no. And if you're using the internet, why would you not use AI, which is largely just based off of all of the information that exists on the internet? So to answer that question... I do think people view it in a way that almost demonizes it. And I'm I'm not fully comprehending why people view it that way, maybe because they do view it as a threat to their own job, to their own business, to their own industry. But I will say this, if you continue to view it as a threat, and if you don't make it your best friend, you will unfortunately suffer because of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've been using the analogy that it to me is like a calculator, we can liken it to a calculator. If you don't have the mathematic brain, a calculator is only going to have limited function. It depends on the person that's using the tool, the output that you're going to get from the tool. So I love your answer as well. I think that we're all figuring this out and we're all navigating the risks and its limitations. And we'll talk about some of those in the later part of this conversation, but I think it is important to embrace and at least start to experiment and play and see where it can fit into your business. Yeah. Yeah. It's that's, that's a great point because is AI right now for every person's business? Maybe not, maybe not from, you know, top to bottom, you know, use cases, you know, from intern to C-suite, maybe not right now, But I do think that there is at least a place for it somewhere in almost anyone's business. Again, to go back to the internet, you know, comparison, if you use the internet in your day-to-day job, you should be using some form of AI because it is a smarter, faster internet that actually generates 
content that you can use because of it. So yeah, I, I think there's so many, so many applications and I'm, I'm very excited to, you know, dive in and talk about these. Yes. That was going to be my next question. What has been your favorite use case either for yourself or for your clients in your agency? What are you loving using AI for? Sure. I think the one thing that people automatically go to is is chat gpt right it had a meteoric rise when it when when it first came out in december of 2022 the thing that most people don't realize is obviously AI in general has been around for decades. It's actually been around since the 1950s, and it's been used in you know major sectors in the U.S. since the 80s. But it really wasn't, for whatever reason, it really wasn't until you know 2022 when ChatGPT was released that people started to pay attention to it. The other thing that's very interesting, and you know, I talk with clients about this, is that even that technology. So, you know, chat GPT is, is built on, you know, open AI's large language model called GPT. So there's different versions, you know, they debuted with GPT-3, we're at GPT-4 now. So even that GPT technology had been out since 2020 and we had been using it, you know, really at the time it wasn't that great. So we weren't using it for clients except for idea generation. Um, you know, even when it first came out, the, the GPT technology came out just using it for idea generation, you know, using tools like copy AI. Now it's called Jasper, what used to be called Jarvis. I, I think that there were so many great applications that we could use it for in clients in its early days, pre-chat GPT, that would allow us to be able to generate better, you know, content ideas. It would help us better outline, you know, what should go in a blog post, what should go in a social media campaign. So in, in the early days, you know, quote unquote, early days of, of 2020, when generative AI was first hitting the scene, the quality wasn't fantastic, but what it was great for was just idea generation. And if you are in marketing, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're trying to go grow a business, that can often be one of the hardest things to do is to look at that blank page and to see that that cursor, right? It's It's the scary cursor blinking. So I think at least early on, that was one of the things that we really used it for was just for idea generation. Mm-hmm. What are you using it most for now? Everything day to day, hour to hour, I could say. So, you know, even accelerant agency. So, you know, our company has taken a shift. So we are just really more focusing on AI education and, and building a platform around that with, you know, our, our everyday AI show. So we're really focused on that and to really just to help teaching people. So we are still, you know, teaching our clients how to better use it, but primarily our focus is on teaching everyone how to use it, not even our clients, but just to yeah. help people keep up because I think it's actually, it's, it's happening AI updates and new technology are happening at a scary pace. You know, even when we look at, I think, Kay, I signed up on your show to be a guest on your show like a week ago. And what's happened in that one week and what that means for entrepreneurs and business owners, that's the development of, of multiple years. And I'm not saying that as, you know, hyperbole, it's not what's happened in the last week in the AI space and the generative AI space with all of you know, what, what Google and Microsoft and OpenAI have announced just in the last week is usually represents years of, of technological development. So that's really what we're trying to do is to help people understand it and use AI to their advantage, because it is like having, if you know how to use it correctly, it is like having a team of researchers, analysts, content producers, writers, designers, you have to understand how to use it and to use the right tool for the right job. But yes, the, the, the development is just so rapid. It's, it's hard to keep up. Oh my gosh. It's so exciting to be in business right now. In my opinion, it's been a while. It feels like maybe since the advent of social media, where it feels like something so monumental is shifting the business landscape. So it is fascinating to me. So you have your everyday AI podcast, which is a fantastic resource. Where else do you recommend that people either like parse through what's happening or keep up or like, how do you, how do you possibly keep up with what's happening? Yeah. Don't go on Twitter, you know? So, oh gosh, 
I'm, I'm going to try to explain it to you visually in my head as, as best as I can, which I know won't be the best for, for, for listeners of, of your show, Kay. But if you imagine a, a line and, and it goes from the left to the right, so on, on one polar opposite is the development of AI. And on the left is everyone else. This is the 99.9% of the rest of us who are not developing AI, you know, who are not building software based on the technology, right? That's not even me. I'm on the left side. So the left side is everyone else. And the right side is, is everyone pushing the technology. So, you know, a year ago, two years ago, the point between those two lines were close, close enough that you could see and follow along and feel like you knew what was going on. Now on a day-by-day basis, the the point on the right, the people developing and pushing the technology is getting so far ahead that the other 99.9% of us on the left can no longer see what's going on. So to answer your question, where or how do you keep up? Like I said, don't go on Twitter. It's overwhelming because the one per, you know, the 0.001% of people pushing it, they're on Twitter, they're on Reddit, they're they're on these kind of more, I call them, you know, dorky hangouts. I hang out there too. I'm a dork, so I can say that. But the best place to to keep up, you know, aside from, you know, I'm I'm not just gonna plug what we're doing because that's what we're trying to do, but you really just need to find the one space where you believe generative AI is going to help you most in your business. And just and just to recap, you know, generative AI is essentially when when it's it's more you know, when AI is generating something for you on the back end. So your chat GPT can generate a lot of things on the back end. Your, your mid journey can generate images from text. You know, there's, there's music ones, there's video ones with runway. So when you're working with generative AI and to say, how can you keep up with what's going on and actually use it? I think you start with one, you start with the one thing you take a look at your company, your startup, your building, whatever it may be. And you say, where do we as a team, as a department, or as a solopreneur, where do we spend the majority of our time on? And then you look and say, what are the tool or tools, not too many, that are going to be most impactful in that one area where we spend the most time in? And then before you you start exploring a thousand new tools, because there's literally thousands with an S of new fantastic AI softwares that come out each week. Instead, focus on one. Focus on that one software, that one AI technology that is going to help you most in your business and ride ride the learning curve and get through it and then make it work for you. And then you can go on to the next. But that's that's my biggest piece of advice is to find, you know, yes, that's what we do on a day-to-day basis. We try to help people understand it and actually use it. But aside from that, just look at the one piece that's going to move the needle the most for you and focus on that and make it work for you first before you dive into, you know, 30 different tools. And I asked this question, knowing that the answer is probably going to shift and be dated relatively quickly, but I would love a few examples of some of your favorite tools that you find to be most useful in your business. Sure. I'll be basic and I'll say obviously chat GPT. It's it's the most powerful and without hopefully dating this because you know even if you're listening to the show tomorrow the information is going to be dated but they obviously just you know in the past week and in the past 12 hours um, have announced some I think groundbreaking updates to chat chat GPT. One of the biggest ones is, you know, browsing. So, you know, you have to be on the pro plan or you had to be on the pro plan to be able to make chat GPT browse the internet, you know, because as a large uh, language model, the date of information that goes into chat GPT is cut off or any GPT technology is cut off at September, 2021. So a lot of people don't know that, but if you have web browsing capabilities, you can get recent, you you know, recent updates when you're trying to use it you know, as a writing partner, researcher, whatever it may be. So chat GPT with um, browsing and kind of the new announcement, I, I got to that. I, I drew it out a little bit, but it's it's now integrated with Bing. So, you know, from Microsoft, that's how you're browsing the web now, where before it was kind of OpenAI's own internal method. So that's going to greatly improve the product. Um, obviously, chat GPT also has plugins. So a wide uh, a wide range of, of plugins. You do have to expert tip if, if, if you're a dork like me and you spend a lot of time in chat GPT, or if you just want to know, you do have to choose. So first you have to enable, you have to go into your settings and enable you know, the ability to browse or the ability to use plugins. And then also know that by default, even after you do that, 
those things are going to be disabled. So you have to go in there, you have to enable either, hey, I want plugins or, hey, I want to browse and then use it. So that was the longest answer to say what tools. So chat GPT, sorry, one of them for sure. Mid journey to be able to create images, even though that's not something that we're doing right now ourselves, I think it's just good to know and to become, I think it's a skill. It's like yeah. like typing or using the internet, you know, to be able to generate these things on the back end. Runway is another great one to be able to generate a short video clips. That's another favorite. So I could, I, it's, it's like, I'm looking at my watch. It's like, do we have three hours to list out all of my favorite tools? Probably not, but I'd say for sure, chat GPT, mid journey and, you know, runway is another great one as well. Love it. I've been using chat GPT a lot and I've been have not dove into the plugins yet. So that's one of my next areas of exploration. Mid journey is incredible. It's not, it's like you said, I feel like it's skill development at this point. At least for me, I haven't used mid journey into any like end products yet, but it's really interesting to play around with and runway is new to me. So I'm excited to go check that out and to play with it. So thanks for, thanks for obliging my question, knowing that it may change. So I know that you have a background in journalism. So I think that you're uniquely equipped to answer this question. Do you have some pro tips for getting a chat GPT or a different copy or messaging word generator to tell good stories? Yes. You have to be patient and you have to work at it and you have to first get your kind of your settings and your process down. So one of the, you know, obviously chat GPT exploded in popularity and it continues to grow, but I think that people don't use it as often as they should because, you know, not everyone knows how to properly use it. So I'll just share with you, this is our own internal thing and we don't really even teach clients this, but I'll, I'll just say it. So we have a three-step process because I think it's important to do this correctly. So it's called prime prompt and polish. Okay. So if you do want to use chat GPT or any other kind of AI chat, like Google's Bard or, you know, Microsoft Bing chat, you can still use this process. So what does this mean? So prime is you are priming the chat and you are giving it directions and you are saying act as an expert in blank, right? That's where most people stop. I, I, my priming usually takes a decent amount of time because I know if I can get it correct, if I can get that chat correct, I can go back to it in months. And it's almost like an employee that you've trained up, right? So you have to prime it correctly. And you say, act as an expert, not in marketing psychology alone, but then you give it more information. You studied here, you know, you've, you've read all of these books, you you know, you, you really have to prime it and pump it up, right? Because it's, especially when it's connected to the internet, it's going to draw on the things that you say. So if you just say you're an expert in, in marketing psychology, that's not enough. You know, you have to say you've studied the the, the copywriting of, you, you know, A, B, and C. So you really have to prime it. Step two is prompt. That's the thing that most of us are familiar with. You, you give chat GPT a prompt or any other platform, a prompt, and it's going to generate something for you on the backside, right? Prompts should be long and they should be well thought out and they should be research. So if you just say, give me a marketing plan for my company, you know, company X, it's not going to give you a great output or as great of an output as it could if you don't have a very detailed prompt on what you want. In the prompt, also give it examples. We give it good examples, bad examples. So it's it's you are training via the prompt. Third step, polish. People never go back and polish the results afterwards. So you say, this is good. The results of this, what you spit out, this is good, this is bad. Please make these improvements. Another another pro tip, I haven't gotten a P for this yet because this is a newer one. We could just say you 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 reprompt. So then actually what we do, based on all of that, so the, the 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 priming, the prompting, and the polishing, we then ask for, hey, out of all of this, please give us back now a prompt that we can use in the future because you know one of the downsides about most large language models is they do have a you know a memory limit or a character limit so 
you know, once we hit that, it takes a while. It's tens of thousands or it's, it's thousands of words. But once we hit that, we don't want to go through that whole training process again. So, you know, chat GPT will actually give you a, it, it's lengthy, but it'll say, Hey, based on this whole process we went through, here's what you should enter next time to get straight to the point. Can you give us a few specific examples of maybe pieces of that prompt or pieces of the priming that would specifically relate to storytelling? Sure. Giving it examples of stories you've already told. Uh, that's, that's a great one. So, you know, even, uh, I mentioned earlier in in the podcast here about you know Jasper, which is another tool that uses GPT, and it's one of the few kind of you know unicorn you know one billion dollar valued companies in the generative AI space. So you can actually work on you know what's called a brand voice. So you can speaking of storytelling, you can put all of your stories in there, how you write in your own brand voice, and it can even use that as a memory, and you can all of those details, even within the story, you can call them in a future, you know, prompt or when you're trying to create another, another story. So, you know, one of the downsides with, you know, just generative AI or, you know, GPT in general is what's called hallucinations where it makes up facts or it gives you something that's incorrect. So you always have to keep an eye on that. But if you go through the process correctly, and if you're using the right tool or the right software for, for its intended application, and you're going through the process, you can usually avoid most of those hallucinations. So then, you know, you can get a great story. You can tell a great story, but you have to put in a little bit of work to train it the right way and to give it examples of here is an example of storytelling in the voice that I want it. So you do have to, I, I've never seen the movie, like how to train your dragon, but you have to train your dragon the right way or else it's not going to work for you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Really great tips. I love that. Speaking of what are some pitfalls, common mistakes that people need to keep an eye out for other than in factual or not factual information? Oof, that's a tough question. I've actually never been asked that. If we're talking just generative text, you do have to, aside from like hallucinations, which is, yeah. you know, things that are not true, things that are made up, you also have to keep an eye on that it's following directions correctly, if that makes sense. So even not, you know, hallucinating, so to speak, or giving you information that's not correct, looking at just the context of the information it gives. But, you know, if you're saying, hey, you know, give me 10 different studies in, you know, this type of, you know, cardiovascular healthcare, cause I'm doing research. It might give you something that's looks like it's cardiovascular, but when you click on it and go read the article, oh, it's actually not, there's an ad at the bottom and it read the ad. So it's like, is it factually incorrect or a hallucination? No, but sometimes it's not going to a hundred percent fit the bill. So there's always, there's always going to be a need or a process to check everything, but you know, it can really take, you know, a five, 10, 15 hour research project and boil it down to five, 10, 15 minutes, but you do have to fact check it, right? You like yes. you have to, and we actually like super pro level tip fact check with other, with other AI chats, right? So a lot of times we'll do that. We will get something out of chat GPT and, you know, we'll, we'll prime, you know, Google's bard, which is kind of their equivalent or, you know, Bing chat, there's like 10 others that we use pretty consistently and we will prime them to be fact checkers and we'll take whatever one, you know, model spits out and we'll quickly, cause it's takes 10 seconds to copy and paste it. And we'll check it across everything. We still always have a human element, but that's a great way to quickly find anything that's inaccurate. You know, so little, little super dorky tip there. I love that so much. That's amazing. Okay. So looking towards the future, clearly neither of us have a crystal ball. And like we already mentioned, things are changing so rapidly, but what are you excited about? Or what are you looking forward to in this space? Yeah. As soon as, as soon as I'm say like, I'm excited about this, you know, we'll see in the years to come, it's announced like later that day. So I'll say I'm most, <laughs> it's literally, even as I say that I'm, I'm saying, oh, I'm ex excited about like multi model, but that's already starting to be rolled out. So, you know, what that means as an example is, you know, being able to go into, you know, chat GPT or Google Bard and to be able to input text and to be able to, on the, on the output, receive multimedia. So audio, video, photo, 
spreadsheets, but that's already in the works and it's already being released. You know, within the last 24 hours, you know, Google Bard said that they're going to have image generation. You know, it's already been announced, you know, that Google is partnering with Adobe Firefly, which is, you know, their kind of version of mid journey or Dolly for image generation. So it's already starting to kind of get released kind of piece by piece, but that's what I'm most looking forward to because Imagine the possibilities if you're an entrepreneur and if you can learn to use these large language models correctly, if you get it right, follow that, you know, that, that prime prompt to polish. And you could, in theory, have an entire month of marketing materials, not just the text, which I think everyone's been doing, but photos, videos, graphics, like the concept of that, you know, as someone that's worked in marketing for like 20 years now, the concept of that is both extremely scary, but it's also empowering too, because I think it levels the playing field for smaller companies and entrepreneurs who have great products and who have great services, but they don't have the team. They don't have the resources. You know, this, this new technology is really going to level the playing field. I think. 100%. Where can people find more about you and the podcast, all the things that you're doing? Sure. The easiest way is just your everydayai.com. So yeah, we have a daily, daily live stream where we allow, you know, watchers, viewers to ask questions of experts every day to, to, to learn about, you know, bringing people in from different fields. So we have that live show, we have a podcast, and then we also have a newsletter daily as well, you know, where people, you know, kind of like one of the first questions you said, Kay, is how can you keep up? It's hard. You literally have to spend multiple hours every day. If, if you are a marketer, if you are an entrepreneur trying to grow something on your own, you have to spend multiple hours a day to keep up with how do you, how, how to do all these things. So that's what our team does. Our team is spending hundreds with an S of hours a month just to provide this as a resource so people can keep up and they can understand, not just understand the technology, but also use it to their advantage. So that's the best way to, to, to find me or find us. Amazing. Massive value. Thank goodness there's people like you who are parsing through and taking that on as a project so that we can benefit and keep growing our brands, growing our businesses. And final question, you already kind of recommended a plan of action, but I would love to sum this up for people that are listening, watching, maybe they've experimented a little bit. What would be one action that you recommend that people take from here? If you aren't using a large language model on a daily basis. So again, that's your chat GPT, your Google Bard, your Microsoft Bing chat. If you aren't using one on a daily basis, start to use it. I've actually, I'm not all the way there, but I've replaced about 80% of my Google searches by using AI chat. So that's, I think, the future. I think traditional search is going to go away. So if you don't, regardless of, of what your profession is, if you don't know how to you know, talk to AI chat models, it's going to be hard to keep up. You know, Microsoft and Google, you know, two of the biggest in search have already said that they're going to phase out traditional search. So you are going to be searching with these AI chat models, more or less, they're going to be integrated everywhere into their products. So if you aren't already doing it right now, that's a great thing. Find your favorite out of the three and try to use it every day outside of normal search, because it is like learning a language. It's like learning to type or use the internet. This is the future of work. So you should start doing it now to to, to really gain a baseline understanding. Amazing. Thank you so much for making the time to share your wisdom, share your experience and expertise. I'm geeking out over everything that we covered. I can't wait to continue to leverage these tools. I appreciate your time and and sharing what you know. No, I appreciate you having me on the show, Kate. I hope you got a lot out of this episode. If you're watching on YouTube, leave a comment. Let me know where are you leveraging AI in your brand and your business? What has been your best use case to date? Let's all learn from each other. If you're listening on an audio only podcast, I would love to continue this conversation on Instagram. You can find me at Kay Putnam and send me a DM over there. Let me know what you got out of this episode and I appreciate you listening. Have a fantastic day.